This boat isn't going to an exotic holiday destination. It's taking us to Obi Island to get a rare look inside one of Indonesia's largest nickel plants. This factory is key in the global nickel supply chain. Indonesia is by far the world's largest producer of the metal, an essential component for batteries that power electric vehicles around the world. But getting the nickel out of the ground is dirty work, and environmentally conscious consumers may not be fully aware of how polluting it is to obtain the metal. The pickle for the EV makers is how do we get this nickel that we need without hurting our reputation and also without hurting the environment. We take an inside look at nickel's growing importance and the environmental toll it leaves behind. Nickel is used in batteries because it increases an EV's range. Batteries with lots of nickel can run farther than batteries that don't use the material. Nickel is the cheapest and the highest energy density, and that's why increasing nickel is a goal of ours and really everybody's in the energy and in the uh, battery industry. For years, nickel had been sourced from countries such as Canada and Russia, where the metal is buried deep underground, which makes it expensive to extract. That's why car makers are turning to Indonesia, where nickel is found close to the surface. And what that means is that it's, it's actually relatively cheap to get to. You don't have to do some big sophisticated tunnel system underneath the ground. The problem is that a lot of the nickel overlaps with forests. So when you're clearing the land, what you're doing is you're clearing rainforest. Increasingly, plants are using a process called high pressure acid leaching to extract the nickel from the ore found here. What that involves is subjecting the nickel to extremely high temperatures and high pressures and it ultimately turns it into a substance that can be used in batteries. This method is about twice as carbon intensive as other processes used in Russia or Canada, leaving behind large amounts of waste. It's another challenge for car makers when they're contemplating sourcing nickel from Indonesia is that these islands in eastern Indonesia are very pristine. They're surrounded by coral reefs. If there's leakage from the nickel into the reefs, that can be quite bad. Nickel mining often takes place in remote parts of the country that are difficult to access. This plant on Obi Island is a full day's journey from the capital Jakarta and can only be reached by boat. There are concerns that there isn't that much oversight over this process and that the local government departments, although they may intend to enforce Indonesian environmental law quite tightly, they may really struggle to do that. A lot of the forest being cleared is being done legally according to Indonesian law. So it becomes a bit tricky for companies because it's ultimately Indonesia and Indonesia is saying this is okay, but if it's okay for Indonesia's government, should that necessarily mean it's okay for Tesla? These are questions that I think Tesla is asking. Tesla and other automakers have in recent years dispatched teams to Indonesia to understand the full scope of the environmental concerns. Despite its toll on the environment, nickel mining has seen explosive growth in the country. Indonesia's government sees nickel as a way for it to move up the value chain. In 2017, Indonesia was a minor player in the EV battery nickel supply chain. But today, about half the world's nickel is mined here. They've restricted the export of nickel, so it has to be processed in country. So once the nickel's processed, they're hoping that batteries will be built in Indonesia, maybe exported from Indonesia, the cars will be built in Indonesia. That's the Indonesian government's game plan. Some analysts forecast that by 2027, about 80% of the global nickel supply used in EV batteries will come from Indonesia. To mitigate the damage done by clearing forests, companies have pledged to replant trees over mined areas. And the government has enforced laws that punish illegal mining. But environmentalists say corporate planting programs won't restore the area's unique flora and fauna. It's very difficult and requires a lot of expertise and a lot of money to really restore an environment, especially in a delicate ecosystem like this. So there are a lot of questions about what these islands are going to look like 10 years from now.